Let's face it, day-night cycles are sick. GTA has one, Fortnite has one, Skyrim has one, I mean even bloody Pokemon and Animal Crossing have them. So, you being the genius that you are have discovered that for a game to be truly amazing, it needs to have a day-night cycle, and you want to add one to your game. But how do I do it, Shane? Well, don't you worry, theoretical YouTube viewer, I'm here to show you how to quickly and easily create a day-night cycle in Unreal Engine 5. Buckle up, because it's dev time. Dev time. The first thing you're going to want to do is to create a project, or if you already have one, make sure it's using the default light source and Skysphere blueprint provided in the editor. I'm using this sexy park level I got from the marketplace, but you can use whatever the hell you want, it's your life and I'm not going to tell you what to do. Ok, are we all on the same page? Good. Now select the light source, and in the details panel make sure it's set to movable. It should be obvious why we're doing this, because the light's going to be, you know, moving. Next, to keep things relatively simple, set the rotation of the light to 0, minus 90, 0, and that will kind of put the sun to midday. Ok, now it's time to start working some magic. Open the level blueprint and create a new float variable which we'll call sun speed. We'll use this to control, you guessed it, the speed of the sun. Then we'll get the sun speed variable and compile so that we can set a value for it. I'm going to go with 10 for now, but that's going to be quicker than online gamers turning toxic, so we'll slow it down later. Now we'll compile again to save that value and create an on event tick to trigger the updating of the rotation of the light source. We'll drag out of the delta seconds pin and create a multiply and then we'll stick the sun speed into the other input. Out of the multiply we need to create a make rotator node and we just need to change the input from x to y as we'll be rotating on the y axis. Now we need to reference the light source, and to do that I'll show you a little trick I like to use. We'll make the level blueprint a floating window, and then we'll get the light source from the world outliner and just drag it straight in. How easy was that? And whilst I'm at it, I'll grab the sky sphere blueprint too as I'll be needing that in a minute. So we've got our rotation set up, but we need to make sure it's happening to the light source. To do that we'll drag straight out from the light source pin and create an add act to local rotation and then we'll take the return value of the make rotator and bug it into the delta rotation here. Now we'll connect the execution pin from the event tick to the add actor local rotation to make sure something will actually happen. Right, let's just add a comment to that because people who don't comment their code are worse than paedophiles or vegans. Now we'll compile what we've got and test it out. You can see that the light is moving, which is good, but the sun on the sky sphere is being stubborn and refusing to move. So let's go and show that ignorant sun exactly who's boss. Back into the level blueprint, drag out of the Skysphere blueprint node and create an update sun direction. Make sure to connect the execution pin and now we'll add a comment, compile and see if the sun recognises my authority. Oh, and look at it go. Yeah, you better run. So this is pretty good. The sun moves across the sky, the shadows change, but it never actually gets darker and we can see the light shining up through the ground after the sun sets and that just looks stupid. Let's fix it. The first thing we'll do is to turn the auto exposure off so we can actually see it getting darker. To do that, make sure you have a post processing volume set to infinite extent and make sure you have the min and max brightness set to the same value. I'm using a value of 3 for my level but it could be different for yours. Now we need to go back into the level blueprint and work some more magic. So we want to make the intensity of the light go down when the sun sets and then go back up as the sun rises. To do that we're going to check whether the rotation of the light source is greater than or less than a given value. So let's get another reference to our light source and from there we'll create a get actor rotation and then split the struct pin as we're only interested in what the y axis is doing. From the y axis pin we're going to create a float greater than float and a float less than float. I already know the values I want to use, so the top one will be if y is greater than minus 15, and the bottom one will be if y is less than minus 16. You might want to try different values, but this worked a bloody treat for me. Now we're going to use these conditions for a couple of branches. The first one we'll have from the greater than, and then we'll create another one from the less than. Then we'll connect the execution pins. 
So we're going to check if it's greater than minus 15 first, and if that's false, then we'll check if it's less than minus 16. Next, we'll create a timeline to control the transition of the light. Double click on the timeline to edit it, and then we'll add a new float track. Add a keyframe at zero and set the value to zero, and another at five and set the value to one. You can even smooth the curve out a little if you like. Then we go back to the event graph and we'll say that if the first branch is true, we'll play the timeline. And if it's false, we'll still play the timeline but in reverse. But this would actually be a bit of a car crash as it is because we're doing this every tick. So for every tick that our conditions are true, the timeline would be played. That's not what we want. We just want the lighting to change the first time the conditions become true. So to achieve that, we'll add a do once in between each branch and the timeline. And then we'll say that once the timeline has been played through, it can reset the do once nodes so they're ready to fire off again. So we'll go from finished to reset for that. And to make sure that they both get done, we'll add a sequence. And from zero, we'll reset the first do once. And from one, we'll reset the other. Okay, we're getting close now. Let's get a reference to the light source. And from that, we want to set intensity. For the new intensity input, we're going to create alert. For value A, we're going to set it to the current intensity of the light, which in my case is 15. And for value B, we're going to get it to being dark. I'm going to use 0.01 .01 because using 0 makes the sky sphere glow in a weird way which kind of looks wrong. Notice that we're starting at 15 and going down to 0.01. .01. That's because the timeline goes from 0 to 1. So in this case, zero on the timeline is a light intensity of 15, and one on the timeline is a light intensity of 0.01. And we'll connect the cycle output from the timeline to the alpha of the lerp to drive the change in the light's intensity. Then I'll connect the execution pin from the update of the timeline to the set intensity for the light source. I could leave it there, but it just doesn't quite get dark enough for me because of the skylight in my level. So I'm going to repeat the process again. I'll get a reference to the skylight, create a set intensity node, add a lerp using values of 1 and 0.2 for this one, and then add the execution pin. Then we'll just slow it down a little using the sun speed variable before compiling, and then we can test it out. As you can see, it looks well sexy. The shadows are moving slowly across the ground, the colour of the sky changes, it gets dark after sunset, and the stars come out at night. Perfect. So we're done here. If you found this video helpful, then be a legend and hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons, it really helps me out. I have links to my Discord server and Patreon pages in the description if you want to get more involved, and I'll also throw a link to the level I used for the exercise down there too. All that's left to say is thanks for watching, and class dismissed.